Okay, so um, I got a question online. I thought I'd just um, answer it with a video since it's actually going to take me less time. And I want to answer and help this guy. So, um, Bo writes, um, Hi, Justin. Wondering if you would be able to share some info about running shoes. Oh, about shoes for scrambling running. Um, when do you choose uh, runners versus approach shoes? And when do you choose runners with a uh, dot rubber resole, like a resole shoe you get at uh, like Rock and Resole, uh, versus factory trail runner lugs and soles? Um, thanks. Cool. Well, okay. That's a really great question. Because um, I do a lot of running. Um, running. Um, I also do a lot of scrambling because I live in Boulder and we have the flat irons. And the scrambling here is off the charts. It's super classic and it's super fun. Um, it's really fun to just like, you know, run, jog, in my case, to uh, a formation. Instead of going around it, um, you just go up it. Um, and depending on how hard the grade is for the uh, formation, you might as well, you can either, you know, use your running shoes that you have on or switch into approach shoes. Or, I mean, just start the run with your approach shoes anyways um, to start with. And then you don't have to carry uh, two pairs of shoes. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways you can cut this up. Um, generally I usually use two pairs of shoes. I use a trail runner and I use an approach shoe and that's more to save the life of my approach shoes. Um, so yeah, so I have a, a, in front of me, this array of shoes that I have taken on runs and we'll go from, um, climbing shoe to just trail runner shoe. And I'll kind of uh, point out some of the, the strengths and weaknesses of them. So the first thing we have is this. This is the um, Sportiva TC Pro. Um, this is what I'd call a climbing shoe. It's a flat-footed trad climbing shoe. Um, as far as climbability, uh, yeah, you could climb the doll wall in this, and it has been used for that. So very climbable. You can do whatever you want. I mean, um, the limit of this shoe is uh, the user. So, I mean, the limit is about 5'7 for, for this user or so. Um, yeah, durability, uh, if you're just climbing, it's fine. You know, it's, it's a very durable shoe. You can use this for off widths or whatever. Um, runnability, uh, none, none. If you uh, say you forget your running shoes at the base of the climb, which happens, and uh, the, the end of the climb where you wrap down is way in back like they are for like the first flat iron or the third flat iron, um, walking down the trail and these are going to be, um, it's going to be a lesson for sure. It's going to be an exercise in pain and you're probably going to kind of mess up your shoes and these are not cheap shoes and you do not want to do that. So if that happened to me, I would go barefoot for sure and, um, save these for another day for sure. Runability comfort, uh, not very comfortable, you know, to run in. So I wouldn't run in these, but I have brought these on runs where we, we go up the flat irons. So Usually it's a flat iron I'm not so familiar with, like uh, if we're doing like an on-site or something, I'll bring these for that just an extra um, confidence boost, or a flat iron that I find that is maybe just a little bit dangerous for me. Um, these are all specific to the person. Um, there's much more younger, bolder, um, sillier people than I am. Um, I'm an old man that, that you know, I. <laughs> I'm basically crawling on class two stuff these days. But um, for example, um, Purgatory on uh, Satan Slab, um, I've never climbed them in anything but these um, because I find it very thin and um, I just don't want to fall. <laughs> but these give me the confidence to, to do them like as a solo. It's the only way to do that one. There's just no way to put protection. So I use this. Um, if I'm doing something in Alpine alone, and there's some technical bits, I usually don't bring these um, because it, it becomes like a trap where if the climb is so hard that I need climbing shoes for and I'm alone and I'm basically on a run, maybe I shouldn't be on it. Maybe I should do something else with my time. <laughs> um, this is the Sportiva TX2. This is um, my favorite scrambling shoe of all time and maybe climbing shoe. Um, as far as comfortability, um, it's extremely comfortable. It's, it's like a moccasin or like a skate shoe from the 90s. It's um, really um, comfortable, I should say, for climbing or should say scrambling. For running, um, uh, it can get old after a couple miles. Um, 
if I take an actual trail runner like this mutant, you'll see that I actually um, size down the shoe quite a bit, and that's just to um, gain a little bit more security and um, come through. Um, yeah, it's just security when I'm scrambling, um, a little bit more sensitivity. Um, so this is, I actually size them the exact same way I size my climbing shoes. So, oh, well, it's a little similar. Um, let's do this. Dear God. Yep. Climbing shoes are tight. Anyways, kind of in the mid, um, in the middle ground, right? So, um, climb, um, sizing them two sizes tighter than my trail runners makes them not so comfortable to run in. If you size these like you do your trail runners, they'll be a lot more comfortable. But, um... There's also like the midsole is a little thinner, so no matter how lush they are for in the forefoot or in the in the upper, it's still not going to be a great shoe to run in for say like 100 miles. Um, and there's no lugs either; it's a slick, um, sticky base, uh, which is going to be terrible if it's um, icy or even wet. Um, even also even like this sticky of material uh, for long runs is actually not what I want. Sometimes I want to glide a little bit on uh, unpaved surfaces rather than have to stick every time I I, um, I land. Toe off's nice, but the, the landing can be a little rough. So usually when I'm scrambling and I want to uh, use these on the scramble and not the run, I'll bring these to um, uh, switch into on the base so i'll bring my like a trail runner of whatever i want and these so that's something like if i do the first or the third or any of the number flat irons or anything i'm like pretty confident on i just really love scrambling in these um yeah uh durability these are actually fairly durable i've had these for about three years now um and they've been resold once with uh like a dot like rubber this is actually the vibrance version of dot rubber Woo. um when I got these uh, resold, the the resellers just didn't have like 510 dot rubber for whatever reason. But yeah, durable shoe, I think, personally. And so durable enough that you can resole it at least twice, I would say. These have lots of life in them, so I'm not really worried. Um, but for, again, running, yeah, I mean, it's it'll be fine for, it's durable enough to run in. Um... I don't know if you're going to be worried about crushing out the midsole because there's not a lot of midsole. It's just not going to be the greatest runner unless you're still drinking the minimalist Kool-Aid, which I kind of am not. Anyways, my favorite scrambling shoe, but when I use it, I bring in a trail runner and I uh, switch at the base of the climb. Okay, next shoe is uh, its, it's uh, older bro is the TX3. Now, this shoe has the same kind of sticky rubber on the, on the bottom of the sole, uh, same Basically same lug pattern, very minimal, just those, it's sort of like a dot, dot rubber um, pattern, whatever. But the upper, I should say the midsole has a little bit more cushion, the upper is um, a little bit more, even more durable. So if I don't feel like bringing, um, you know, starting off with the trail runner and switching into an approach shoe, and there's, I actually want to run, and I don't need that super extra sensitivity that this shoe requires, or I, I get from the shoe, I'll bring the TX3. Um, so for example, I did like um, my Glacier Gorge day, which was like 30 something miles in just this shoe. And it was fine. I mean, my my, shoe, my feet were definitely protesting at the, at the trailhead at the end of the day, but it was also a uh, 20 hour day. So, I mean, they're gonna be angry anyways. Um, it's not, it's still not the greatest runner uh, I believe Sportiva has a new shoe called the TX Guide, which is much more like a running shoe than the TX3. I've yet to try them. I probably won't just because they're narrower than the TX3 or the TX2. Um, one of the reasons I like the TX, TX series is how wide they are. But um, in a pinch, I'll run in these. I can't run as fast as I possibly can in these. And I would definitely wouldn't take these off for just like a run around the, the, the block. You know, just like local trails that are, I'm not going to be scrambling on. Um, because the the outsole is sticky, but that stickiness comes at the cost of durability. So I want to kind of, again, save these for when I need them for scrambling. Um, yeah, but I can climb pretty well in these. Like, in a pinch, I could climb whatever I can climb with these. And again, I actually size these down from 
my trail runner size, but they're kind of sized up from the TX2s by just a size. So that's how I do that. Also, these are really great shoes to mountain bike in. Um, they're sticky enough that since I don't have like actual mountain bike shoes, I can get away with these and they're fine. So again, if I'm doing like a, a, a bike run hike, I'll, uh, I'll grab, grab these and then this is the only shoe I need instead of like four shoes, you know. All right, next is uh, actual trail runners. And actually I want these like this. Actually, no, this is correct. So this is the Ultra Raptor. This is an awesome trail running shoe. It's one of my favorites. And one of the reasons I love it so much is the sole for a trail runner is probably as sticky as, as you're gonna get. Not as sticky as uh, the, the rubber that comes on these guys. This is Mega Grip, whatever that means. Um, but pretty darn, um, pretty darn sticky. And in a pinch, I'll, I'll go up some flat irons. I actually have never done these, like the first in these. I'll always use a TX. But um, if one shoe rules them all, it's something like the Ultra Raptor. Um, and also the sole, the look pattern in the back or in the, on the outsole is very minimal. So there's a lot of surface area. So it's gonna be a little bit more, say, stickier than this, this which is the Mutant. Um, Durability, um, it's fine. There's tons of durability. You'll see I use a lot of um, seam grip on these. I do that for all my shoes, all my trail runners, because I'm off, off trail so much, I'm going through Talos that I kind of require it. Um, and I change out the uh, shoelaces on all these shoes just because I find that replacing them right away is the best way to go. Um, uh, very comfortable shoe. Um, I definitely run 100 miles in these. This, this is a shoe I bought actually for one of my Nolan's run. And um, I totally do a Dolan's again, one of these, no, no question about it. Also great for backpacking um, or fast packing. It's a great shoe. Um, the minimal lug pattern kind of uh, is offset by how, just how grippy this gush darn thing is. So pretty good. Um, next in the line that I have is, this is the Mutant. This is my all time favorite trail running shoe. Um, fits so well, fits almost like a really, really good climbing shoe. It just kind of, hugs hugs your um, foot in there um, very comfortable mesh upper um, it's just a it's just all-time favorite shoe um, same rubber as the ultra raptor it's just that this look pattern is way more chunkier way more aggressive so, so this is the shoe I use for my entire Songrees traverse um, this is the shoe I've used for my entire um, centennial trip so that includes like all the four great 14 or traverses plus a whole bunch of stuff that no one knows about that uh, very technical stuff <laughs> that are bringing me nightmares just thinking about it. Um, I put it kind of in the, the spectrum as most climbable to least climbable just because of the lug pattern. Um, it's just so aggressive, you know? So there's gonna be less surface area to, to actually bite into, say all the smearing we do on the flat irons. So the next shoe I have is, um, this is the Lycan 2, and I liken this shoe uh, a ton. Um, it has the same kind of pattern, the look pattern as the Mutant, um, but different rubber. The rubber lasts longer, but it's not as sticky. So this is a, a really great, uh, it's got that rocker too, which I enjoy. Um, the Lycan one did not. Some of the things I like about this shoe is uh, the look pattern is the same as the Mutant, so is that really aggressive um, lug pattern, but, uh, the, the rubber is different. So you're going to be looking at, um, a longer lasting rubber. That's not as sticky. So really good if you're doing a lot of stuff on the road and trail. Um, but if I'm using this to do my trail run and I want to do some scrambling, I'll definitely bring like a, a scramble shoe with me to change into. Um, as far as durability, uh, these have hundreds and hundreds of miles on them. Um, the lugs have been worn away, whittled away to mere nubbins, but I think that's more because the rest of the shoe held together so well and allowed me to do this. Um, so like this would be a great shoe personally for me for like a 50K um, or just as a daily trainer. Um, not a really great scrambling shoe. So. That's kind of like the lay of the land. Okay, so that's some info about scrambling in running shoes. Um, basically, the better the running shoe, the worse the scrambling it is. And if you have a really bad shoe for scrambling, think about bringing like a TX2. Like you'll never go wrong, you know, scrambling in the TX2. Um, I just, I can't run in this for more than a couple of miles because um, I've sized it down so small 
I, you know, my big toe hits. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't function as a running shoe. It's, it's, I've sized it down to as small as I can to make it function more like a climbing shoe. The climbing, the TX3 I have, I've, it's, it's a, it's just a 45 rather than what I usually use as a 46. So I can run in this. I just can't run very fast or be very happy after a 20 mile run. Um, yeah. And then these guys, I could run four months on them, you know, until they fall apart. And this is just a great trail runner, but not a great scramble shoe. And that's what it is. So resoling, um, if you don't know, um, resoling the, is the idea that you can take any shoe you want and go to the um, climbing resoler and get it, get the, the outsole changed to a stickier rubber. Um, usually it's like, it's called dot rubber. It's just a pattern. Um, and the rubber is similar to a climbing rubber, probably lasts a little longer, like just the, um, the, the um, whatever the formula is for the rubber, um, probably lasts a little longer, but it's way stickier than any like trail runner that uh, you get just from the factory. So what do I look for in something that I want to resole? Um, of all these shoes here, and I want to resole on dot rubber, um, let's just say these shoes, because these all are, already have um, sticky show. So these three shoes, this is probably my best candidate for um, getting this uh, uh, resold into dot rubber. Uh, one, so when they do resold, they usually do it from just the midfoot up to the toes. So this is, you, can, you don't have to resole this. Um, they just whack off the rubber that's there and put in the new uh, dot rubber. Um, one, like this started out as um, pretty low profile lugs. So um, getting it changed to dot rubber isn't going to change the profile all that much, which is great. Um, I think this will be fine as well. A lot of people love this shoe. This shoe fits a little tighter on my foot than this shoe, so I kind of like this more for like an all, all day, all week shoe. Um, that's my personal preference. But one of the things you want to think about when you get a shoe resold is um, how how worked is the shoe to begin with? Like, have you crushed out the midsole already? Is the upper falling apart? So, I mean, the best candidate for a shoe to get resold is a new shoe, but that can also get kind of expensive. Like a resole of like dot rubber, I think is like 30 to 60 bucks. So add that on to the price of a new shoe and all of a sudden you have like a 200 plus dollar shoe to scramble in. And that's kind of another reason why I'm like, you know, I'll just use two of these because they'll last twice as long than a new shoe that's resold. Um, plus, if you do a lot of running in that resold shoe, it's just going to wear down because you're running in it. Um, that's basically kind of the compromise you get, though. But say I was doing a project where I'm doing the top 10 flat irons in a day, or I'm doing all the classic flat irons, which are like 50-something flat irons, and I want to go really fast, and I want to keep my gear minimal. I would definitely take the shoe to rock and resole and be like dot rubber this buddy and like this is will be the shoe i can use for 99 percent of the routes i do miles of routes and then for a couple of the routes that i'm a little shaky on like purgatory or the north face of the matron or, or the maiden for that matter like i might just bring these out but that's just me um yeah that's about it a little longer video than i i assumed but that's kind of like why, you know, like why would you use a scrambling shoe or an approach shoe rather than a trail runner, rather than a climbing shoe? And that's my collection. Well, part of my collection. I uh, hope, hope that answers the questions. And if you have any more questions for me about trail running, mountain running, uh, scrambling, climbing that you think I can help you with, um, leave some in the comments or email me or slide into my DMs. Yeah, I'll see you in the next video.